Whether you are starting robotics as a hobby or as a career, there is a general question that is revolving around which is how do we start it? So robotics is not a literary or a philosophical field. It requires you to build physical things as an end product. So it compromises three main aspects of a machine, electronics, programming and a physical body. For learning part, we have options of simulations and the real world. For simulation, the software's most popular we have is ROS Gazebo, VREP, VBOT, MATLAB, NVIDIA Isaac, MATLAB, Gazebo both combined. And for real world, we need to understand electronics, we need to have a physical body, we need to do programming. On simulation side, all we do is just programming, but we need to understand the big structures of the softwares before even starting out. So on the other side of real world, there are available STEM kits that help you to skip electronics and physical body design. You just start by programming from the very basic things. So there is a trade-off that you have to decide for yourself. On software side, you need to understand their purposes. ROS is not a simulation software. ROS is for the programming, algorithm design and communication part. Gazebo is the software that shows you the robot. Although in Gazebo, the robot standing is because of ROS control packages, but when you are looking at a robot in simulation in ROS and Gazebo, that is because of Gazebo. ROS has nothing to do with the physics engine. Similar is the case with MATLAB. MATLAB is for algorithm design. They have a lot of programming thing. They have a lot of simulations. They have a lot of plotting mechanisms that you can visualize, although the plots in MATLAB are actually of MATLAB. And that's why it is sort of paid. ROS is open source. And similar, VBOTS, NVIDIA Isaac, and VREP, they all have inbuilt programming and simulation. But in ROS and Gazebo, there is this difference. And another difference that you need to understand is Gazebo and Arviz. Arviz is what robot is looking at. Gazebo is what environment looks like. When starting out, there is one more important question. Do we start from ROS1 or do we directly start from ROS2? If you are just starting out from the very base, go for the ROS2. Because in ROS2, a lot of things have been changed. The most updated thing that I interact with daily, which was not in ROS1, was NAV2 stack. The way it is built, it's amazing. Usability is easy. The second thing is ROS2 controls. The third one is micro ROS interface for microcontrollers, which is RTOS flavor. That was previously not for ROS1. But still, companies require ROS1 as their systems are on ROS1. And one more thing. Thing that if you are short in time there is a lot of content a lot of examples for all robot types for ROS1 but not for ROS2. So let me share three examples of mobile robots in real world versus simulated world. The first one is line following robot. The second one is visual line following robot and the third one is AI bot. For first example of line following robot using IR sensors in real world this is the common robot that everyone makes. When you see the robot acting on the proportional the integral and the derivative controller that is the point that builds your strong understanding with the graphs inside of the book what they were telling and you connect with this real robot and it literally shocks you when you are doing it for the first time so let's talk about second example which included a simulated and a real world robot visual line following robot based on a camera and raspberry pi so i first simulated this concept on ROS and Gazebo and tested the algorithm it was working robot was following properly. So here you can see in the real world the main difference was the lighting issue of the environment and uh, the camera perception was different as it was in simulation. It required some tweaking at the end it was done. But in this project there was one benefit of simulation it saved me a lot of time as I ordered the hardware it was coming and when it reached to my location i was ready with the software just small tweaking and the project was complete let's talk about the third example ai bot and uh, this is the most interesting one as we train models on our laptops with good gpu good cpu 8 cores 16 thread they used to give you 100 frames per second performance but when you shift to a robots microcontroller hobby microcontrollers for example raspberry pi they give you just two three fps and that literally shocks you and code is running so slow and this is the experience that that pushes you to write efficient code, utilize hardware AI libraries, which is very essential for you to understand the optimization part of the models. From the career perspective, if you see any title with software robotics development or robotics development, you will find out that there is always the requirement of simulation, which include VREP or ROS. And the reason is very simple. The hardware is expensive. 
and uh, commercial hardware is very expensive so they don't want you to break it because you just missed one single unit test so what is the conclusion of all this for my own self i will drive it that i was an electrical engineer i started with directly building electronics and programming and utilize stem kits but after three years in the final year i started with the simulation software ross and gazebo and all the algorithms i used to write on the real robot i used to first test that inside of gazebo and ross it is helpful but for starting it is not required for more complex algorithm simulation is better and more and more good practices you adopt for programming it helps you to squeeze the bridge between simulation and hardware so it totally depends upon you just start it and then improve it don't stick to that only simulation is better or only real world is better for you start one thing and then start testing the other one as well